Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Jesus, the Son of God, have you ever seen him or shade of his favor? And is Jesus the Son of God? Or oh, who would reject him, despise or forsake him? And is Jesus the Son of God? sought him and he will not take him Jesus the son of God have yielded my life to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of he is word till I heard a sweet voice saying, Make me your choice. And I entered the heaven of rest. Oh, sweet wonder. And is Jesus the Son of God? Oh, sweet wonder, oh, sweet wonder. Jesus the Son of God. And trust and believe him, Jesus, the Son of God. Your soul will exalt him and never will leave him, Jesus, the Son of God. Then from heaven, O oh, clouds of bright glory, Jesus, the Son of God, will come for his jewels and most precious holy, Jesus, the Son of God, come on, call your soul in the heaven of rest and say, My beloved is mine. Oh, sweet wonder, oh, sweet wonder. Is Jesus the Son of God? Oh, sweet wonder, oh, sweet wonder. Jesus the Son of God. How I adore him. Oh. How I love him. Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. It's our turn to blend our voices to praise God.
And we're beginning with hymn number 700 from our hymn book, CGS. You're welcome to the house of the Lord on this first Sunday of the new month of March. We thank God that he has made it possible for you and I to see today. May his name be praised. Amen. I was in the prayer room this morning and um, it came to my mind that when this church was dedicated, it was referred to as a factory. A factory where souls are being prepared for heaven. You're welcome to that factory. Amen. We have the Spirit of God as the one in charge of the operation. And it is the prayer of my heart that you will allow him to operate in your soul. As I am going to do too, I will allow him to operate in my soul. Jesus, the Son of God, is here with us. We are going to sing in number 700. We praise thee, O God. And for those that are worshiping with us on the internet and you would like to join us, you have not missed much, only just the prelude, the um, choir rendition, um, wear a crown and a solo, Jesus the Son of God. You can as well join us to sing together now as we are beginning to sing together. We are located on number 13, Penn Hill Road. This is the Apostolic Faith Church, if you're able to do so. And for those who are unable to do so, wherever you are, we just believe that the Lord, this Jesus we are talking about, is everywhere. He will bless you wherever you are. Amen. Let's take verses 1, 3, and 4. Verses 1, 3, and 4, and a couple of more other songs. And we have Brother I or Ajibola to come forward and lead us this morning. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That yes. Jesus loves everyone? Yes. Irrespective of your tribe, your color, it doesn't matter. He loves everyone. And if you believe with me, you sing with all your heart this morning. Mm -hmm. We sing again from the same in book, 669. Amen. May God take every one of us down to that holy place. Yes. And you know what? We must be our conqueror yes. before we can get there. That's right. And that's what God wants to do with us this morning. Amen. And that is leading us to the next song we are singing, which is 505.
May the Lord count you and I worthy Amen. on that day. Amen. Uh, we want to sing the last song, 681. When Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we are thankful unto you for this privilege to be counted among those that praise your name. We are in the land of the living, said the living shall praise your name. Lord, glory be unto your name. We cannot count enough, we cannot thank you enough for the blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives. They are indeed countless. But here we are, O Lord. You have called us to make us your people. A people saved by grace. Lord, glory be unto your name. And so, Lord, we have come once again just as we are. We pray that through your word we'll be pushed, we'll be washed, we'll be made whole. We commit your servant into your mighty hands that you will anoint him. You will anoint your word. That anointing that will break the yoke, that will liberate heart, that will set us free, that will bring us to yourself. Lord, do it. We know this is the day that you have made. As you are blessing us here, those ones that are not here, could be in the sick bed, could be in else places. Lord, reach out and bless them. Amen. Wherever people are gathered in your name, Lord, pronounce your blessing. Amen. Make this day a blessed day. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayers, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Bible reading is taken from the book according to St. John, chapter 3, verse 13 to 21. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, verse 17 to 21. 17. For God Send not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. 21 and the last. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen. God bless you. The day seems long, a trials hard to bear. We are tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. Our tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials we seem so small when we see Christ, one glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Sometimes the sky looks dark with not a ray of light. But there is one in heaven who knows our deepest care. Let Jesus solve your problem. He is now right here. Just go to him in prayer. Let Jesus solve your world. It's all when we see Jesus. Life's trials we seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely roll the rest till we see Christ. Day will soon be o'er, all storms forever past. We cross the great divide to glory, save at last. We share the joys of heaven, a hap, 
a home, a crown. The tempter will be banished. We lay our burden down. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face. One glimpse of His dear face. All sorrow will erase. So bravely roll the race. to the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11, and I will read verse 28. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. The Epistle of James, chapter 1, verse 17. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning. Mm -hmm. Just want to speak to you briefly this morning about the fundamentals of the gospel. Amen. Um, I decided to look in the dictionary and find out really what is meant by fundamentals. And it says building blocks, forming a necessary base or core of central importance. Mm -hmm. And another dictionary said, a central or primary rule or principle on which something is based. There are, all of us are in different profession, or even if you're not yet a profession and you're a student, there are certain core subjects as a student that you must do in school. So basically, teachers will tell you, the school will tell you, these ones are core, you have to do them. Mm -hmm. All other things you can choose. And and it's actually de determined by the law that you have to do them. And also, in any profession, you do have those things that are core in life, that it has to be done. Otherwise, there is no point in that you cannot be a member of that profession. The gospel is the same there are certain fundamentals that we must just practice. And right. First of one, one of them is the one that we read in Luke chapter 28, just chapter 11, verse 28. Mm -hmm. We hear the word of God right. and keep it. All right. When we hear the word of God and keep it, no one can take that away from us. Yes. You can rightly say, this is my own. Yeah. And this, I'm, I, I, would, I would rather die with it. Yes rather than someone taking away from us or from me. If you hear it and you don't keep it, 
then you have a problem. The same thing with myself. If I hear it and I don't keep it, then I have a problem. If you have a shirt and you don't keep it, then you lose it. You have a skirt, you, you, you don't keep it, then you lose it. It's, it's, it's the fact of life. But uh, the love of God has always been that we hear the word of God and keep it. Yeah. And the reason for wanting us to keep it is because God is a God of no variableness. Yes. God doesn't change. It's the same God today, tomorrow, yesterday, and it's going to be the same God forever. Many things in life will change, but God remains the same. And that is why James chapter 1 verse 17 tells us that every good gift and every perfect, the first good gift that has come to this world is the word of God. And that is Jesus Christ himself to express this word of God that we also will accept that. Uh, and the way he gave it as the way that he wants us to practice. Yeah. So once we, we get that and we, we live by that, that is then very important. Yeah. And also, um, the commandment that was given in Matthew chapter 28, um, this gospel according to uh, St. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 to 20 is that we should go into all the world and preach the gospel right. to every creature. Right. And if God, God wants it to be exonerated that every creature has heard the gospel. And therefore, there will be no excuse that I did not hear it. That is why I did not keep. Obviously, no one will blame you for that which you have not heard. No one will blame you for that which you do not know. Right. But once we know, God expects us to be, to have, to be dili diligent enough to keep it. Right. And there, uh, there may be some aspects of it that you feel that you... You want, you, you know, you may not be able to keep. But prayers, that is why God gives us the spirit of prayer. That he, can, he should help us to keep those ones that we feel are difficult. Because yeah. um, yeah. we, when, we, when we hear about trials and th this morning, all those things that we should give up why it is important, it is by prayer. Yeah. None of us can stand here to say, yes, I can stand. It is by prayer. It's the prayer that rubricates the bone of contention. It's the prayer that makes it easier for us to keep the word of God. Yes. Uh, we will not all drop our sense from heaven to, to the world. We struggle to make sure that we, we keep it. We struggle to make sure that we are part and parcel of it. So God expects that there will be, there will be some combustion from time to time. But we will not be excusable if we do not keep the word of God. And where we are struggling, we still go back to the same God to, to help us. Because the love of God is great. That is why when we read also in Gospel according to St. John, this chapter 3 that has been read for us, the reason that we must hear the word of God and keep it is that God has done the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. He has sent his son. Again, let's remind ourselves what the gospel according to St. John chapter 3, verse 18 said. Let's start with 17 again, the, the Bible reading. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We talk about salvation all the time, but it is important we talk about it. Yes, let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about the Spirit of God. At the same time, let's talk about salvation because that is the, the, the core of going to heaven. You may want to define your own salvation. I, I don't have a problem with that. But I know the one that God wants us to have. Yeah. And when there is a variableness from the one that God wants us to have, that is why sometimes you see me from my face. That is, it doesn't seem to tally with the one that the Bible told me. So, and, and then you will excuse me for being different. Uh, and, 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 if, and I will excuse you for also being different. But God is the ultimate judge. Yeah. 
because uh, we, we, if we know that which is good for us and we don't do it, that means we haven't kept what God wants us to do, what God, want, what God has given to us to keep. Because God has done the ultimate sacrifice. He, he, he didn't send his son to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Right. And salvation is important as the first fundamental point yeah. Yeah. to see God. As the first fundamental of the gospel, as even when the DS was making announcement to join our choir, you have to be saved. Even though it, you are that one time that you're just coming to sing here, you have to be saved. Otherwise, there's, there's no point. If God did not save my soul, I wouldn't be here to, 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 to speak to you. So it's, it is a cardinal point in the way we do things, in the way we want to move forward. And... The, 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 you know, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult. I don't know. You know, you stand before a judge today, and the judge said that you have been condemned to life imprisonment. We fear. Yes. You, you feel gutted. Yes. I, someone would say this, would say, ah, how come I even get to, that it got to this point? But God is greater than the judge yes. of this world. Yes. And that is why... God sent his son into the world to condemn, not to condemn, but through him Amen. that the world might be saved. Amen. Because he that believeth on him is not condemned. Yes. If we believe in Jesus Christ, we are not condemned. But if we do not believe, already we are finished. That is the greatest judge. Once we do not believe in him, we are condemned. A judge condemned and sent to prison. The same thing, you are condemned by the Spirit of God and you are dead. You are in prison. Two things at the same time. Is, is, is condemnation into imprisonment for life. It's life imprisonment. And Satan also has his own prison. So not everyone that is sitting down here has, getting, has gotten out of that, of that prison. The one that the judge of this earth condemns you to is for is is made uh, would get and barriers, and you when you get there, there will be many things that you you be told to do which you were not doing before, just to trim you down to show that you are in condemnation. In the same way, the Spirit of God monitors into our heart from time to time to let us know you have been condemned. But there is a way out Amen. through Jesus Christ that was sent Amen. to come and save the world Amen. and deliver from sins and unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The, the, the reason for the condemnation is that the light is here. Jesus Christ is here. Yes. And many people just want to turn away from that light into darkness. That is where God, you will be, you, you yourself, you will be very unhappy. You, how many parents are not unhappy with their children? You, you say, ah, is this the one that I labored for? Is this the one that I brought up? And when you see properly, you know the way he or she is going, is, is going will lead to danger, one way or the other. And that is out of the experience that you you were first born before that before him or her, that leads from the experience of life, you will say where he's leading is he or she is leading is leading to danger, mm -hmm. and the same thing with God who made us, Wonderful. He knows us yes. right from the womb. He knows who we are mm -hmm. and can say, my son, my daughter, the way you are going, you are being condemned. You are condemning yourself into perdition. But thank God Amen. that Jesus Christ Amen. is here Amen. to make sure that we are in the light. Amen. And he has put so many things in place to make sure that we keep the fundamentals of the gospel. We come back this morning, we heard the Sunday school. We have the Sunday school book. We have the tract. We have our knees to go and pray. It is wonderful. It is. It doesn't just save and then le and leave you there. No. It saves you and wants to keep you oh, within yeah. the fold. Oh, yeah. And you 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 go to our website. 
You have enough the daily devotion to read. You have prayers, prayer meetings in your house, in the church. Everything. You still, yeah. you are bombarded with many things that can make you to feel good. Yeah. And I do not know why, to me, it's not a burden. No. There may be once, and once in a while that you cannot make it, but it's understandable. Mm. But it is, it is a good thing yeah. and should be encouraged to happen. Yeah. Um, the, the, the questions that we were trying to address this morning rings all through Christendom. Today, you ask people, who is Jesus Christ? Other religion will say he's a prophet. And this one will say he is that, he is this, he is that. It, it is today... The same thing. So don't worry about the Bible time or even before the Bible time. As it were in those years, it's the same today. Yeah. You traditionally ask, who is Jesus Christ? And people will say he is the prophet. He is Isaiah. He is Jeremiah. Oh, is he not Moses? He is this and that. But we have to know who he is. Yeah. Because by us knowing who he is, then we will want to line up ourselves in order to please, to please, to please him. Yes. And in order to do his own will. Yes. And uh, it is fascinating that these things, God, even in those years, knew that the world would be the same. And he started to put things in perspective so that we can be the beneficiaries. And I want to remind you what we studied today in the Sunday school in that uh, gospel according to St. Luke, um, that chapter 16. Okay. I want to read from verse 15. Sorry, Matthew 16, verse 13. My apologies. Matthew 16, verse 13. Gospel according to St. Matthew 16. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men think, who do men say that? I, the son of man, am. Those questions today, we get, we get asked the same questions. I've, I've worked with, with so many people in different lives, walks of life, and I've, I have heard who they think Jesus is. And as a Christian, when I hear it, I will want to let them know, no, 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 it's more than that. We cannot compare him with mortal man. We cannot compare him with mortal flesh. And... I wanted them to read verse, verse 15. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? It wasn't a teasing question. It wasn't something that he, he just wanted rea a reaction. He, he meant it. Yeah. He, he meant to know. You know when you yourself, you ask, somebody says to you, or you say somebody offends you or something like that happens. Who does he think he is? We are, we, we are saying because you feel that person is not superior to you. We feel so. But Jesus just wanted to make, make, this, make sure that those that are with him clearly understand, clearly understood clearly knew who he was and who he is and who he is going to be forever and ever. And it is the, that is being passed down to us today. It, 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 it's not a teasing question to get teasing answers. It's not an examination question to you, for you to answer to see who is going to get the highest mark. No, it is a question to reveal the core value 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ in your heart. Yeah. It is to reveal who you are, your closeness to God, yeah. and how important you value that closeness. Yeah. And that is why Jesus said to Peter that blood and flesh has not revealed it to him. It is the spirit of God that spoke through Peter. And if you don't have that spirit of God, you will never understand why we are here. You will never understand what we are saying. It will, if you don't have that spirit of God, it will be like saying that ladies should not wear trousers and you tell me that, oh, it's, it's not ladies' trousers, it's, 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 it's not men's trousers, it's ladies' trousers. You will always have a counter-argument about doing what you want to do because you believe that God is variable. God is not variable. And Jesus wanted to know, do these guys understand who I am? And that when, when, you know, if something happens, you say, oh, it's apostolic faith. Thank God, it's apostolic faith. Yeah. That, is, that is the foundation that has been given to us. And we thrive with it. And we want to go with that. We just want to, we, we, we want to leave it as it is, as it is, as it is. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you may, you, you don't be offended because that is, that is our gospel. Yes. Don't be offended, that is our organization. Yeah. But we will continue to say that the kind of salvation God has given to us, we want to practice. We want it to take us to heaven, because if we, the things that are, are are happening in the world today, if we if we let go, we will be answerable to God, and that is why you, you know that caution is always let's keep it tight. Let's keep it tight. Let's keep it tight. And, and in doing so, we are blessed. Yes. In that God, um, it, it, it's clearly saying, in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, and Jesus answered and said unto him, that is Peter, has given the answer that Jesus was looking for. He said, blessed are thou, Simon Bajona, being someone that knows Jesus, who he is, is blessed. It's a blessing. There's nobody that truly follows God in this gospel that is backward. No. It doesn't happen. It doesn't just happen. If you see something backward, no, there's something else. Yes. If you see somebody back, what? Know that there's something else. But once we accept Jesus Christ and follow his footsteps, we are blessed. Yes. Amen. You can determine what that blessing might be. It's not about oh, riches and, and riding in limousine, but we are blessed. Yes. That is why God is calling you into it yeah. to say, Come, yeah. come, my people. Yeah. Come, my son. Yeah. Come, my daughter. I want to bless you. Uh, if you if you were to come here and it's all lined up uh, limousine, there you probably would think, oh, this is this. No, 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 no. God doesn't define blessing in that in that in that way. Yeah. We are blessed to go to heaven. Yeah. We are blessed to do the will of God. Yeah. And and and, uh, and and there's no one that will come naked begging you before he he can have. He or she can have subsistence as far as this gospel of Jesus Christ is concerned. And a lot of us sitting down here are, 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 are with degrees. It, as you know, they are learned. We are all learned people. How, how much more would you want to be blessed more than that? To be, for your brain to be opened, to learn, to get a paper. I, when I didn't have a degree, I was... I, some people will talk about degree, degree, degree. I say, how does it really look like? <laughs> and, and, you know, one day, once then you have it, you, you say, ah, ah is it, was it meant to be a paper? And when, when, I, when I had my, I say, is that it? You, so the world, the blessing of the world that is insatiable. Yeah. And you want to, oh, another one, another one, another one, yeah. and it's endless. But you, you're the gospel blessing is a spiritual enrichment. It's got to be different from the world. If it were not different, then there would be no point. So when Jesus said to Peter that he is blessed, God meant that. 
today we ask somebody, how are you? Oh, I am blessed. Oh, thank God you are blessed. I will walk away. We're not going to argue that you're not blessed. But look back. Are you saved? Are you sanctified? Are you baptized with the Holy Ghost fire? Do you pray and God answer your prayers? Do you follow God's direction? What, where, is, where then is the blessing? And when it continues, and I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, the teacher had explained that to us, yeah. upon this church I will build, upon this rock I will build my church, yeah. and I will give unto you the Amen. keys of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. It's very important. Amen. Say whatever we agree, he will agree. Amen. And whatever we say no to, he will disagree. Amen. You know, it's important yeah. to belong to that movement. Yeah. This, when Jesus made this statement, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. There was no church. That was the first mention of the church, the word church in the, in the New Testament. Yeah. There was no church. Jesus was making plans that he would establish his church. Amen. And when he said that the gates of hell yeah. shall not prevail against it, he means it. Yeah. You see, since then the church has grown. Yeah. And we don't worry about other denominations. If you look at the Apostolic Faith Church alone, it, I mean, the recent report that I read from Brother Darrell is it, it, it has overgrown more than when he took over. It's not, it's not um, basically complimenting himself. He said, yeah, I, I am in the midst of this. And then he started to mention Countries that were having one church, they have more than 100 now. Has the movement not grown? It has grown. He said, when well, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, when well, now, as a child of God, in, in this world, there are the gates of hell. You, there are the, it's imaginary. It might not be that physical one. A sinner is in the gate of hell. When, they, when, Jesus, when you are saved, to so start from this world, the gates of hell doesn't prevail against you. You move out to the gates of heaven. Amen. You move out to the spirit of God. Amen. Because the gates, God has said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his child. Amen. That is why we have victory. Amen. Anyone that sits down and not be saved denies himself of that victory. It's important that we, 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 we understand the Bible. And now... When it comes to the church, and you are a member of the church, you are one of these great movements. Other, other religions have tried to overtake it, to overtake it, no chance. The Bible is still the number one bestseller in the whole wide world. It is a movement to be proud of. It's a movement to look up to. And then you look at the, the, the spread of the gospel. Yeah. And God will not blame us for what we haven't heard. That is why he makes it important that everyone hears before they, they breathe their last in this, in this world. Yeah. And then, when he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, yeah. you, then it comes to the time when every man, as many of us as live, we will also die. It's important that we put that on our record. Yes. Right. And when we die, right. there is only one way, lower down to the gate of hell, which is the ground. And it is that ground that God says the gate of hell is not a physical gate. It will not prevail against his child. It's like as you go down, it's the body, the spirit has gone to, the, to heaven. So the gates of hell prevail not against such a, such a child of God. But those that are not saved, you are there, and Satan is tormenting. Right. Torment, Satan begins his right. torment, right. and then the gates of hell prevail that pe against that person from moving, from, from, from meeting God. The Bible has given us several illustrations about this. Remember the story of Abraham and, uh, and, um, and Lazarus? So... And the rich man, so 
for the Lazarus and the rich man. So there are so many illustrations to say that if we don't make our ways right now, and then when that call comes, which can come at any time, there's some people whom the gates of hell shall prevail against. But for a child of God, it will never prevail against. In this world and in the world to come. It is an assurance. That is why when we are sick, you know, sometimes when any of our brothers or sisters is critically sick, we take, we take a stand. We can pull it. We pray. We, we can, you know, last year was a particular example. We had so many critical cases in the hospital. And we as a church say, we will prevail. Yes. And when we prevail in prayer, we saw those people out. Yes. Is that not God saying that I have said and I will answer? Amen. So why would I not want to be part of that great movement? That great movement that of saved souls that will go to heaven. Because God has promised, hey, I will do it. Yeah. He said he will not prevail against. Yeah. We pray and they come back to life. But if we pray and God uses the system to sanctify them, to take them to their eternal glory, so be it, God has answered. It's not like um, we have wasted time. No. He has honored. And I decided to look at this, um, what does the, the word, I mean, in those days, the gate um, uh, in, in Greek, I'm told, is uh, called a, a classia. You remember in those, I mean, we look at Babylon, those great cities that uh, in, in, in the world, the, 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 the strength, the level of protection of the indigents was determined by the gate, yeah. by the strength of the gate that they will build it as a massive city and make sure they put the gate that no enemy can assail. Remember when uh, the government of uh, uh, Belshazzar was to be overthrown, that the Medes and the Pesha, they actually duck, duck, they duck like a trenches and then came out into, into where he was in order to capture him because they could not prevail against his gate. But God's gate for his own, just make sure that we is a compass for us, mm -hmm. that we are protected. Yes. But and, and then Satan also has his own gate. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to. If there was no gate of hell, the Bible would not mention it. So there is a gate also in heaven that we have to be sure that we can get through the gate of heaven to stay in heaven. God also has to put the shield so that Satan and his people cannot just pour in. No. There has to be a protection for his people. And that is, what, that is how God works. You first. Amen. That is the safe soul first. Amen. And everything else is others. Yeah. This God is a wonderful and great God. Yeah. And uh, when the Bible says, when Jesus asks, who do you think I am? It was not just at the time of the disciples. Remember the three Hebrew children? They said, ah, we know our God. And we are not going to bow down to another one. But today it doesn't even take, it doesn't take the king to ask anybody to bow down. It doesn't take the authorities to ask anybody to bow down to other gods. We just... Minor things, minor things happen, and you see, you bow. Very, 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 very small thing. Nothing to compare that you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire, and you bow. You deny him. He wanted to be sure whether you are, you really, really are there in tune with him. Whether you, whether it's in your signature, you bow. Or whether it is in the way you speak, you bow. Is if it's the way that you look, you bow. It could be in the way that you, you walk, you bow. It could be the way that you show up, you bow. But the three Hebrew children said, this is our God. We will not bow. And that was one of a great incident of the revelation of the Son of God in the Old Testament. After they said they won't bow and they were thrown into the lake of fire, did the Son of God not go there to rescue them? Yeah. He went, and God did not want it to be just a matter of the four of them. Daniel, 
Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No, it wasn't be, to be a matter of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then they saw the Son of God, and they, because no one would believe them, he had to send the highest authority, the king himself, to go and see that there was his, his another one, there's somebody else though. And he, where he saw, how he knew, it was the divine devotion of God that this fourth person is like the Son of God. Where did he see him before? Is it not God? So how can we not, how can we not say when we have, when we get the fundamentals right, those three Hebrew children got the fundamental of the gospel and they stuck to it. Once we have the fundamental and we, keep, we, we stick to it, then we know for sure that, no, that nothing else can prevail. It's, it's, it's not about singing, it's the reality. Every one of us sitting down here, every one of us coming here to stand, we have passed through it. And it doesn't mean that that is the end. I will never happen again. Another one can come tomorrow. Big, big, big trial. Things that you cannot imagine can come tomorrow. But yet you have to be rather sure that Jesus has promised that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his own. But if you're not part of that group, what will be your standpoint? See, it was not just about the time of, uh, of the disciples. It has started from the early days. And when I looked at the word church, in Greek, it says ecclesia. And that, what, that, what did that mean? It said it is called out Amen. or assembly. So a member of the church, a saved soul, is a called out soul. Uh-huh. A called out. Who will call you out? It's God. Yeah. It's God that will call you out. And it's God that is able to maintain you when he calls you out. And, and nobody else can do the work of the inside, of what is inside the, the heart of man. And when we are called out, Jesus in the Gospel according to St. John 25, 24 says, we live because he lived. Because Jesus lived, we will live. Because he lives, he gives us the right to live. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world given." It has, so the world gives peace, yeah. but they're temporary peace. Yeah. But the, the one that Jesus gives right. is permanent. Yeah. And he, he, he has promised that he is here. And we, so it's not something for us to just joke or shake about. It's the reality of life. And this knowing of Jesus right. is Something that you and I should desire yeah. to know yeah. and to know him more. Yeah. Because it's not just about us. Is it not that uh, Paul in writing uh, to the Philippians said that he wa- his, his greatest desire was that he wants to know him. Right. And it were, if it were, if, if my brother and sister, if you're sitting down there and you hear about death, something about it, and you begin to panic know that there's something wrong. Let's try and correct it while we are still breathing. Because that is what Paul was trying to say, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. If we die and then that power of resurrection does not try, you know, move us out, we have lost. There was, there will be no, there's no point. For all, it will be a waste of time for you and I. When, if you hear of death, you know something apart. You maybe you go to hospital and, and maybe someone diagnoses you of sickness and of criticality, and you haven't. <laughs> please, no, there's something wrong. Oh, and God will reveal to you what is that thing that you make it right. Because it's not just about knowing Him; it is knowing about the power of His resurrection, yeah. which is the hope of every Christian. Yeah. So it is not a matter of uh, when. When, uh, Pete, when Peter said, you are the son of God, the son of the living God, this is Jesus Christ, is, that we know him truly and the power of his resurrection because that is the thing that will keep us up there. Yeah. 
That is that force that will make us to have the rapture. Is that force that will make us to rise from dead. It is that force that will make us to see Jesus. I just want us to come and pray. And God will help us that we truly have the fundamentals of the gospel. As you come and pray, tell Jesus Christ you want to have these fundamentals embedded in you. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to understand the fundamental of the gospel in which we want to build on, on which we want to make our base, even as we are on our knees now, Lord, looking up to you, crying to you for help. We pray that you send your spirit Amen. to explain to us, Father, Amen. to help us to pray through. Amen. So that when we get up, we will be able to say, I now know Christ. I am now belong to Christ. I now am now part of this great throng that are heaven bound. Count us worthy, O Lord. Thank you for everything as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.